In case you didn't know, when you create your own classes, your own types, like the type soldier right over here, then you have created a valid C++ type, just like int is a type and char is a type, right now soldier is also a type. And that means that you can pass instances of this type into a function, like over here I'm passing in one instance called instance1 and another instance2. Of course, as usual, I don't have to supply a name. I could just say that I'm passing in two different soldiers separated by a comma. But to make it clear, we're going to put a name. And you can also return the type soldier from a function as the return type. This function over here, do stuff, will now take into itself two different uh, parameters, both of the type soldier, and it will also return a soldier object as an expression. Right now, inside the definition of the do stuff function, we have two objects which are being passed in. Right over here, I'm calling it s1 and s2. And I can st start playing around with these two object, uh, objects however I'd like. I can call their functions like attack and stuff like that. They are regular objects of the class soldier, just like we saw with John in the main function in a different video. And besides that, because I declared that this function will return a object soldier, so now I have to go ahead and do that, so I can return a object soldier, whichever one I'd like. I could e either return one of those that I got passed into the function, or maybe if I created a different soldier right over here called F or something, I could return that soldier F uh, as the return expression. Now when I call the function do stuff in my program, uh, what I get is a expression that evaluates to a soldier object. Right now, for example, I'm creating two instances of soldier, it's called A and B, and then I'm passing those two instances into the do stuff function. And because this do stuff function returns a soldier, I can uh, take advantage of that expression and, for example, put it into a soldier object, something like this, where I take whatever comes out of this expression and I assign it into this X object. We're going to learn more about this in future videos, about something called the copy constructor, and how objects are passed into functions, and how they are returned from, from functions, and then how this expression of the object goes inside this object over here. We're going to learn more about that in a different video, because it's a little more complicated with your own custom types like soldier, than it is with regular built-in types such as integer or stuff like that. Another thing you should know, by the way, is that when you create your classes, it doesn't really matter where you put the member variables, whether you put it on the bottom, or whether you put it on the top, or whatever you'd like to put it, maybe one of them on the top and one of them on the bottom. It doesn't really matter in this case where you put it. Though usually, as I explained in different videos, you must declare something before you start using it. Like in the main function over here, I can't start using the function do stuff before I uh, declare it or def define it before I start using it. So it's a good thing that we declared the function do stuff over here so that now I could start using it in the main function. If I wouldn't declare it over here, we would have a compiler error because we don't know what this function over here means. So maybe you'd think that also with classes you have to first declare the member variables and then you could start playing around with them in the methods, but that's not true because the cla in classes it's an exception that wherever you declare the variable members doesn't make a difference. It's as if you already declared them from the beginning and all the functions know about it. It's already included into their scope. 